Today, we are on a dyno death march testing five different cylinder heads for horsepower. It's going to be fun. If you've seen our previous video testing to see if roller rocker arms can help an engine make power, then you probably recognize Newcomer Racing's Dyno Mule Stroker engine. This is a 4 liter Jeep block bored and stroked to 4.5 liters or 275.6 cubic inches with crank and rods from a 4.2 liter Jeep engine. To provide plenty of air to get the most out of these heads, the cam is a hydraulic flat tappet with 226 and 232 degrees of duration at 50 thousandths tappet lift on a 100 degree center line and approximately 527 thousandths of an inch of valve lift. Also, the intake manifold is an aftermarket casting that Newcomer has hand ported. I'll put a link to our previous video with more details about the engine in the description below. Just remember, we aren't looking for absolute peak power here. We just want a stable dyno mule so we can track the power differences between the cylinder heads we'll be bolting up. Newcomer Racing is constantly testing different engine packages for both power and durability, and they specialize in the Jeep market, which is why we have the famous and incredibly popular Jeep 4.0 engine on the dyno. So enough talk, let's get started. Here's pull number one with our baseline tuppy head, the same one we used on our rocker arm test. The results are healthy for any naturally aspirated Jeep straight 6 engine, and from previous dyno tests they are exactly what we expected. All dyno pulls will be from 3500 to 5700 RPM. Across the range, the Tuppy head averaged 317.4 pound-feet of torque with a peak of 328.7 at 4700 RPM and 277 horsepower with a peak of 311.3 at 5500 RPM. This was Newcomer Racing's fully ported tuppy head that we've used on previous tests. After pulling it off the engine, we asked Keith Newcomer to give us some more details on this head as well as the next head we'll be running. Okay, so this head basically is a customer's motor that um, it was, uh, let me think about this, so like an 0, 03 model with a, a tuppy head and it's got the raised exhaust and this one is fully ported. So we worked on the exhaust to change the exhaust side of it. A standard exhaust port, you can see the outline. This one is raised. So what we did is expand it. We raised as high as we could get on the roof. The floor we didn't mess with. Um, you actually want the height. But it's, you're a little limited on how big you can go. You don't want to break through. The intake side, you can still go the same. It's the same as the older style heads. Customer side, he wanted to try the Elderbrock head. So, which is a good thing because we wanted to test all this stuff and we had already started so we decided what the heck we'll put a bunch of heads together and that's what we've got so this one uh, would be 99 to 06 uh, 0, 2000 2001 would be prone for cracking you would not want that it would not have a tuppy sign in the middle of it but this one does so they're pretty good and this one has been all swapped over with like an ls conversion so it's got 202 160 valves, fully ported. Everything's been done to it. It's been clearance for uh, larger push rods and everything also. On the top end, uh, we're running like a, a comp uh, 915 spring. We actually sync the spring pockets 150 thousandths to gain more lift. So you can run like a 600 lift cam if you wanted to. Um, just regular old Viton seals and we ran this one, it runs good. So now the next head that we're gonna run is a 7120 older style head with a bowl blend and a stock LS conversion, two inch valve 150. So we're gonna see how they run. 
You'll notice that we aren't using a totally stock head as a baseline. That would have been ideal, but the large cam we're running to stress these heads has enough lift that the top of the heads have to be cut for greater valve spring installed height. We simply don't have a stock head that would work with this combo. As Newcomer mentioned, the second head is an older style with a larger exhaust port. Otherwise, it's mostly the same. The big difference here is that the ports haven't been touched. The only handwork done here is to blend the transition from the valve seats to the bowls. So let's go with pole number two. It's not surprising that the unported head suffered in comparison to the ported one. Interestingly, Peak torque only fell off 8 pound-feet, but it dropped way down in the RPM range from 4,700 RPM to 3,900. We also lost 10 peak horsepower and 7.7 .7 across the average. Still, considering this head has received only basic machine work, meaning decking, new valve seats, bowl blending, and some cutting of the spring seats to achieve greater valve lift, this is pretty impressive production for an economy level cylinder head. By this time, we're getting pretty good at head swaps. Besides Newcomer on the upper left, that's Austin Redelick on the left and Devin Rowell on the right slinging wrenches. I mostly just tried to stay out of the way. Head swaps normally took about 20 to 30 minutes, which is why we were able to get five done in a day. If we were working on a traditional small block Chevy, that would have been an impossible task. Our third dyno test will be our last with a stock iron casting. This one, however, has had the works thrown at it. Okay, so this head is the 0630 head casting. We ran this similar casting, the same casting on our 300 HP build in an earlier video. This one is used lightly. It's off our turbo build and trying to round up heads, we went through and cleaned it up. And this is another big head, as big as you're gonna go because the last one we did really big, we actually broke through. So this is another one that we did, but this is 2055 intake, 1650 exhaust. And we're running a 918 comp spring on this one. Standard LS setup. And as you can see, it's pretty big. Um, exhaust size is the same size as the header. You don't have the raised issue so you got a big exhaust valve exhaust port so this is as big as you're going to get cast iron this is like the, the peak of the cast iron heads right here this head isn't for every person by any means um, you need to move a lot of air either forced induction or cubic inches to help it breathe cam will actually also help a lot also if you go a cam is too small you're not going to benefit the the reward we're going to find out how it runs compared to the other cast irons. And then we'll move on to the Elderbrock stock and then the Elderbrock fully ported that will compare to this. I'm curious to see how the fully ported versions run compared to each other. Just as Newcomer predicted, this all-out head suffered a bit on the bottom end, but it was by no means terrible. The ported Tuppy head did better from 3500 to 4100 RPM, but from there on out this head, and we dubbed it the Turbo because that's what it was originally built for, took over. With peaks of 329.7 pound-feet of torque and 314.4 horsepower, it's our best performer yet. Overall, average power was just a bit better than the Tuppy head. It also had the largest chamber at 66 cc's, where the previous two heads had 63 cc chambers. If you're running a stock bottom end or are spending a lot of your time in the lower RPM range, this wouldn't be a great choice. But if you have a stroker combo with a big cam or you're looking into a turbo, this head proves that an intelligently ported stock casting can really unlock some power. 
so our last iron head came off so we can move on to the recognized leader when it comes to aftermarket heads for the Jeep Straight 6, Edelbrock's Performer Jeep 4.0 head. Besides being an astounding 35.8 pounds lighter than the cast iron stock head, the aluminum Edelbrock has a more modern 55cc combustion chamber and uses the better old style exhaust port shape. The valves are sized at 1 inch 910 thousandths in diameter for the intakes and 1 inch 500 thousandths for the exhausts. Um, yeah, so this is a stock out of the box Edelbrock head. Customer wanted it and we decided to test it against one of the fully ported big valve heads that we did. That's the first one we've done. But this is a nice head. Um, it's got a nice chamber design, um, good quality. It's got beefy springs, should be able to twist it pretty high. The runners are all CNC matched, so it's not bad. Um, ours, we decided to take a step further and we put a 208 intake valve and a 160 exhaust. These are actually hollow stem. We had to go a little longer valve to get our installed height the way we wanted it. But we changed the chamber a little bit, opened it up, fully ported everything, opened up the exhaust side. It makes pretty good flow numbers. It's not all about flow numbers, but the exhaust side had huge gains on the exhaust side. So we'll see on this motor. I don't know if it's gonna make that big of a difference because we don't have a lot of compression, a big cam. You know, it's not a trick bottom end. It's not like a long rod option. It's a short rod motor. So we'll see. Everything bolted up with no issues, which isn't always a given with aftermarket heads and we were ready to roll. This is where the dyno graphs start to get crowded. And if you happen to be watching this video on your cell phone, I apologize for it right now. But the stock Edelbrock cylinder head was impressive. It made good power, especially in the mid-range, and performed well against the hand-ported cylinder heads everywhere except in the upper RPM range, which really is to be expected. It's hard for any as-cast cylinder head to compete against a custom hand-ported head. Still, the unported Edelbrock produced peaks of 326.9 pound-feet of torque and 302.9 horsepower. This is a very affordable head that can be ordered fully assembled and ready to bolt right onto your short block. And besides being significantly lighter, it also spanked the freshly machined stock head. I'm a fan of this little unit right here. Finally, we dropped on our last head of the day, the fully ported Edelbrock Monster. Like the ported turbo head, this is a maxed out cylinder head that is likely only suitable for bigger engines or forced induction. This was the one we've been waiting for. As you can see, the line for the ported eddy just about overlays the graph for the fully ported iron head, which was our previous best. However, the ported Edelbrock was just a tick even better on the top end, producing the most peak power of anything we tested with 316.7 horsepower. You're likely to see this cylinder head again on another high horsepower build Newcomer Racing has coming up, and we are really excited to test its true potential on an even more aggressive engine build. So what did we learn? We learned that there is no single ideal cylinder head. The AMC and Jeep 4.0 straight six is great at making consistent torque, but it resists efforts to significantly increase RPM or horsepower. So even the 15 horsepower improvement we saw between the stock bulb blended head and the ported Edelbrock is pretty significant all things considered. If you're running a stock short block, your best bet is likely a stock head with a good set of valve seats cut into it. This will provide the best torque down low and drivability. But 
if you're going with a stroker combo, a big cam, or other upgrades to make power, this proves that there is a lot you can do with the cylinder heads to improve both torque and horsepower. But most important of all is go burn some gas and have fun. Hey, thanks for watching.